So what's the T in tech and space? I'm glad you asked. Starlink, NVIDIA, AI, Twitter, and much more. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is going to be a tech space type of day. It is all about the tea. What's going on in tech and space today? It is Monday. So we're going to get right into it. But before I do, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, go check them out. They're free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. Click this button. So when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, if you want more Starlink content, just Starlink solely, I have about 150 videos just for you. Check them out over here. It's a playlist or possibly a podcast. I don't know. They keep changing the name, whatever. Go check that out. Once again, 150 videos just for that. This channel has like over 900 videos now. I can't even believe it. It's a lot. Also, if you're looking for a VPN or faster internet or possibly even more reliable internet, go check out Speedify. The nice folks over there gave me a promo code that will give you 20% off. That is 20% off your purchase no matter what it is. Go check them out. You can also get a freebie, let's say, and check it out for 30 days and see if you like it. Go over to Speedify and use promo code JCHRISTINA or just click the link down below. If you click on that, it will automatically automatically take you to their website and immediately give you 20% off. You don't have to remember anything. So go and check that out. Anyways, let's get right into this. We got an article here that talks about the Pentagon and we've talked about this in the past, but now we are getting news that they are definitely going to pay for SpaceX Starlink to be sent to the Ukraine. This is really big news because there was a while that we didn't know what was going to happen. So it reads this. It says the Pentagon disclosed on Thursday that it has signed a contract to provide SpaceX Starlink satellite Internet service in Ukraine. Nearly eight months after Elon Musk, the company owner, threatened to terminate access unless the U.S. government paid for it. This was very important because he's like, I don't know how long I can do this for. I need some help. I'm doing this as a humanitarian type base, but I'm not made out of money. Or is he? <laughs> the Defense Department acknowledges the decision, but withheld virtually all details about the agreement, including how much it will cost the U.S. taxpayers and when the contract was signed. The U.S. defense officials had previously estimated that the annual cost for Starlink in the Ukraine, which Musk mostly had been donating, would cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, now, we are going to be paying for those Starlink terminals in the Ukraine. Now, we've heard in the past it goes from about 120 million for the rest of this year, all to like 400 million, I think it was. But we'll get into that in just a second. The article continues, quote, satellite communication constitutes a vital layer of the Ukrainians overall communication network and the department contracts with Starlink for service of this type. The Pentagon said in a statement, quote, satellite communications constitute a vital layer of the Ukrainians overall communication network and the department contracts contracts with Starlink for this service of this type. However, the operational security reasons and due to the critical nature of these systems, we do not have any additional information regarding specific capabilities, contracts, or partners to provide at this time. Basically, we're not giving you nothing. This is all super G14 classified and that is it. That's as far as we're going to go with it. The article continues with, quote, we're trying hard to do the right thing, where the right thing is an extremely difficult moral question. Quote, SpaceX is not asking to recoup past expenses, but also cannot fund the existing system indefinitely and send several thousand more terminals that have data usage up to 100 times greater than a typical household. This is unreasonable, is what Musk said. And that makes sense. Each one of 
of these terminals are literally downloading and uploading 100 times more than what we would as residents here in the US. That is a ton of data that's being expended or used. Now in another article that kind of puts a bow around this, it states this, it says, in a letter sent by SpaceX to the DOD or the Department of Defense, Musk said that he wanted the Pentagon to start picking up the tab for providing vital communication services for the Ukraine with the company claiming it would cost $120 million by the end of the year or nearly $400 million next 12 months. So next year, for a full year, you're looking at $400 million to be able to cover SpaceX's Starlink terminals that are in the Ukraine. That is a bunch of money. That is a lot of money. That's close to half a billion dollars. And who's going to start funding that? Right? At the time, SpaceX's COO Gwen Shotwell said that Starlink was never meant to be weaponized, but claimed that Ukrainians have leveraged it in ways that were unintentional and not part of any agreement. Chinese military researchers also published a paper earlier this year suggesting that lasers and high-powered microwaves might be used as a means to disable Starlink satellites without blowing them up and creating vast amounts of debris that would threaten the satellites satellites and spacecraft. So this is interesting because they're showing that, well, Starlink is going to be used. They are being used. Russia's not happy about it. And China's saying, hey, we could disable these things with high powered microwaves as well as lasers. If you really want us to, we will. Not really good. So we can see Elon is spending a lot of money in the Ukraine, giving away terminals and also providing data coverage for all those terminals and not really making a lot of money at it, making basically nothing. And we'll expend a half a billion if it's not for the government to pick up some of this tab that's in next year. Well, his Twitter company's not doing great either. And I was reading an evaluation on this and I was like, oh my God, the net worth or the evaluation according to Fidelity is $15 billion. That's not good because he just bought it the other day for $44 billion. Now we know he understood that it was going to be a loss, but I don't know, a one-third loss or something. That's a lot. Fidelity, a prominent financial service company, has marked down its equity stake in Twitter, revealing that the company is now worth $15 billion of the $44 billion that Elon Musk paid for it. This development raises questions about Musk's overpayment and financial struggles faced by the platform under his leadership. Now, a lot of these magazines, publications, they always just downplay Musk and saying he's just stupid, he pays too much. There was a reason for him paying for that at that amount. And we all know what that is. It doesn't matter what they say here. It's just, you know how this goes, right? They are biased and you just have to read the articles accordingly. It continues, Musk, known for his ventures in technology and automotive industry, industry had openly acknowledged overpaying. I'm glad they say it. He was quoted in saying this, although obviously myself and other investors are obviously overpaying for Twitter right now, the long-term potential for Twitter in my view is in an order of magnitude greater than its current value. This is what he said. Now this is something that is big. He said this back in October, a order of magnitude more. So Elon is looking at Twitter as being a company that's going to be worth close to to 60, maybe even $80 billion in the not so distant future. How is he gonna get there? I don't know, but he's a smart guy. If anyone can get there, he can. The article continues, the markdown valuation of Twitter's equity by Fidelity has intensified concerns about the platform's financial standings. This is the third time the company has marked down the social media platform since Musk took over on October 8th. So while we see Twitter going down by a third, we see Nvidia going up by like 300% just this year. It is crazy. And this is all due to the AI boom that's been going on. I was reading an article that kind of puts, once again, a bow onto this that I thought was very interesting. I was just dumbfounded by the amount of money that NVIDIA has made. I remember getting NVIDIA cards, graphic cards, way back in the day, and they was always cheaper than getting like the Intels or any of the other ones. And then they just started getting better and better and better. Now those cards are, you can pay like, $1,500 for like an NVIDIA graphics card. It is crazy. Anyways, it says NVIDIA has joined the likes of Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, and Amazon with the companies briefly reaching $1 trillion 
dollar market cap on Tuesday as its share price shot up more than 5% before retreating, making it one of only a handful of companies to do so. A trillion dollar market cap. NVIDIA, this is craziness to me because I remember this company when it was little. It is massive now. Shares of the chip maker based in California continue to rise significantly and nearly triple since the start of 2023, in part driven by the wave of artificial intelligence, AI, innovations in the past year. Founded in 1993, NVIDIA was originally known for making the type of computer chip that processes graphics, particularly for computer gaming. The company's chips are critical to the booming AI economy and the firm last week reported first quarter revenue that dramatically exceeded analysts' expectations, as well as revenue for second quarter that was 50% more than analysts had predicted, reflecting an annual growth rate of 64%. This is nuts, absolutely nuts. NVIDIA is seen by investors as a key player in the AI field makes sense. Early this week, NVIDIA said that it was building a supercomputer specialized for generative AI tasks in Israel that will be one of the world's fastest high performance systems ever built. That is massive. And that's one of the reasons why people are like, I'm getting involved with this. So we have taxpayers picking up the bill for Ukrainian communications. We have Nvidia hitting the $1 trillion market cap, which is nuts. And then we have Twitter that's going into the tank by a third, down from 44 billion down to 15 billion in equity. That is a ton of a loss. What do you think about all of this going on in tech and space? Let me know down below. Let's have this conversation. I want to hear from you. Also, if you enjoy this video, even the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you want more like this, click this little notification button, do all of those things. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all.